Never Let Me Go, which uh, obviously got its premiere at the London Film Festival last year, so it feels like it's been around for a little while. Adaptation of a novel by K- Katsuo Ishiguro, who wrote Remains of the Day, and the screenplay is by Alex Garland, who wrote the novel of the beach and then the screenplays of 28 Days Later and Sunshine, and then wrote that short novel. Did you ever read it, Coma? It was a very, very short novel about somebody having a sort of near-death experience. And there was a book. There was a novel called Coma by Robin Cook. Yeah, no, not, not that. Him. No, that's why I said by Alex Garland, because Alex Garland wrote it. So that's why it was a novel. By I him. was just contrasting it with another book written with the same also title, also called Coma, but it's not that. It became a film. So the story of Never Let Me Go is it's set in an alternative present day. It opens up, and and I should say, incidentally, on the issue of plot spoilers, I'm going to try really hard not to give very much away about this. Although, funnily enough, the movie doesn't make a big deal of holding its secrets back, and certainly there are no big revelations, but I, I'm going to try. So it's set in the present day. In the opening moments, we learn that at some point in this alternative uh, recent past, a major medical breakthrough was achieved that fundamentally changed the way people viewed their life prospects. The story is narrated by Kerry Mulligan, who at the very beginning of the film we see um, in a medical surroundings and with obviously a, 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 a huge melancholic weight behind her. Here is a, a clip from near the beginning of the film. My name is Kathy H. I'm 28 years old. I've been a carer for nine years. And I'm good at my job. I'm not trying to boast, but I feel a great sense of pride in what we do. Carers and donors have achieved so much. That said, we aren't machines. In the end, it wears you down. I suppose that's why I now spend most of my time not looking forwards, but looking back to the cottages and Hailsham and what happened to us there. So very early on, you're told carers, donors, we're not machines, and you have that score. I actually really like that score. Some people found it a little bit, um, you know, uh, overpowering and uh, a little bit insistent, but I thought it was very moving. The, what happens is, the action then moves to a boarding school where we're introduced to a group of children who appear to be being brought up in, and I said it's it's an alternative. Uh, sort of near future, near present, near past. It appears to be sort of 40s or 50s influence, but you're not quite sure, but it is an, an alternative world. And it moves to boarding school in which these children are being brought up in what seems to be very strictly regimented ways in which they're told to look after them. So smoking is the worst thing they can possibly do. We see a couple of strange scenes, one in which a school teacher says to them, you have no future. I have to tell you, you have no future, and is promptly fired. Um, a very moving scene in which the kids are told that there is there's going to be a sale and it's going to be a bumper crop of sales items and the kids are really really excited and then the bumper crop turns up and it's delivered by these men in vans who don't want to look at the kids and look at them askance in a way that is a strange mix of 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 sympathy and repulsion and then the bumper crop turns up to be like a load of broken toy stuff that's been left over by everybody else and you get this idea that they're living some isolated existence in which they are somehow completely cut off from the rest of the world it then moves on to the later stage in their life in which they're in the teenage years in which they again are living not quite so much in isolation and connecting with the real world world and it becomes apparent that they are living a life which is predestined for something which is not good from their point of view and yet what happens is you don't get a a sudden revelation of what it is that's going on you just get an awareness of what their situation is and a desperate sense of why are they putting up with it why aren't they running away they're not imprisoned anymore though they're psychologically imprisoned very early on one of them throws a ball outside of the confines of the school and they won't go and get it because you don't go outside of the confines of the school now Obviously, the th- things that are necessary to say, it's a, it is a science fiction story in as much as, you know, it's an alternative future story with, uh, you know, with a science fiction plot, which if you're familiar with things like, I mean, you know, Clonus Horror, which was then recently remade as the island unofficially remade by Michael Bay or Blade Runner, in which it's to do with, you know, robots being more human than the human. All these ideas are ideas that are out there. In, and to be honest, if you if you have any sort of concept that you probably know what the film is about. I'm just trying not to say more than has to be said. Essentially, it is about characters who are living in an environment in which they they are just accepting a terrible circumstance, a terrible fate in a way which is sort of melancholic and immensely frustrating. And 
It is therefore about a number of things. It's about how valid is anybody's life. It's about, uh, you know, are we able to, to uh, somehow be complicit in our own downtroddenness? It's about politics. It's about hegemony. It's about, um, you know, whether or not the human soul is indeed uh, something which is tangible. And in many, I mean, a lot of people who've read the book say that actually, as far as they're concerned, the film doesn't capture those ideas in the way that the book does. I have to tell you, having not read the book, I found it very moving. I found it very, very uh, affecting. And I was surprised because even there are things about it that don't, things about it that I kind of found frustrating. But the biggest frustration for most people is that there is no big revelation. There is no big, this is happening. Oh, wow, I can't believe this is happening. Let's do something about it. In fact, it's because it's not a film about that. It's a film about accepting a circumstance which is so sort of, you know, so awe-inspiringly terrible that you you're just putting up with it and you're just in, in a way which obviously connects to you know i suppose the history of the world over the last hundred years and also has sort of existential questions about what does it mean to live what does it mean to die what does it mean to be in control of your own destiny the three essential forms is carrie mulligan andrew garfield and kira knightley i all thought were very good kira knightley is terrific in this and it's a very difficult role to play because in a way she's there's a love triangle going on between these three characters and actually, she has a very tough role to play. And I thought she did it terrifically well of being slightly brittle and uh, a character who's not entirely sympathetic and a character from whom you want more sort of uh, engagement but doesn't give it to you. And I thought that for me, the chilliness, the iciness, the coldness of the film worked very well. The film that it reminded me of most in many ways is, you ever see The Handmaid's Tale? You know, by Volker Schlondorf. Volker Schlondorf. Yeah, the director. Did you ever mm -hmm. see that? Must have missed that one, I it, think. Well, it was quite a big movie. It was, um, it, the screenplay was by Pinter, but it was from a novel by Margaret Atwood. And the story in, in that was that in the future, there is a sterility problem that people can't reproduce. And there's an underclass of people who can reproduce. And they are basically used by the, by the, the, by the rich to reproduce for them. And there's a terribly harrowing scene in which one of the people who've been who've basically being used as a battery farm... It, it, are, are there present in the scene and yet everyone is ignoring them as if they're not real, as if they're not a real person, as if they only exist to fulfil this function. And it's a film about sort of dehumanisation. And I have to say, for me, Never Let Me Go reminded me of that in many ways. Handmaid's Tale didn't work. Handmaid's Tale did fail and it didn't get terrifically good reviews. And it certainly didn't make a lot of money at the box office. And most people who saw it and read the book said, well, it's not as good as, uh, as, as the source material. I, however, thought The Handmaid's Tale was moving and the ideas that it raised did get under my skin. And um, I have read a few reviews of uh, Never Let Me Go In, which people have, as I said, people have complained about. You can't get, you know, it's not getting the tone of the book right. I, I, there were certain sections in it, where I think it's a combination partly of, the, I think the performance has been good, partly of that score being, it being evocative, partly of the fact that the direction is so chilly. The, the stance of the film is so stepped back. It's so unengaged. The key emotional range of it is a completely blank face. And I think that's possibly what some people are finding hard to accept, that it is a, it is a movie that kind of never plays its hand and never explains itself fully. It's just, it's a movie about accepting a terrible circumstance circumstance but I was genuinely surprised by how good it was partly I have to say because um, I you know I had heard very very mixed things about it in advance and I do think that it's flawed I cl it's clearly not working for everybody and it's clearly not a film which has you know been a, a, a wholehearted success in adapting a book about which people feel strongly but I thought that it was a, a a poignant and moving and strangely affecting story that at moments actually had a genuine sense of tragedy about it and was admirable for the restraint that it demonstrated and was well played very well played by the three uh, by the three main characters and uh, you know, I was, I, I, there were certain moments, and I hesitate to use this phrase, there were certain moments in it in which I did get a genuine sort of, or that sort of tingle of, oh, this is genuinely terrible. Um, so I was impressed and surprised.